Does anybody here love Jesus? You know, and um, you know, we're we're talking about worshiping God, and and there, Jesus said this that He's looking for those that worship Him in spirit and in truth. And what He's saying that we could be religious about this and not be worshipers. But we could also have a relationship with God and love Him. And while we're singing these songs, we're realizing, we're connecting to the creator of the universe, the one that sent His only Son, because He loved us so much to die and suffer for us so we could have a relationship with Him. And sometimes we suffer in the words, like what words can I use to describe my love for Him? And that's what this song is saying, but it's more than the words, it's your heart. And there's a time in your life that you just got to be in a moment and just say, Lord, I'm just here on this Sunday morning, this Thanksgiving weekend to just say, thank you. Thank you. You're so good. And then maybe you could take some time and thank him for what you do have. Because it's so easy to take inventory on what we don't have and what we've lost and what's wrong in our lives. And it's hard to worship with the wrong list. There's a time you have to just stop. And I've learned this, that some, there are times that worship is a sacrifice. That means you're emotionally not in the moment, but you could be spiritually in the moment. What I mean by that is you can't wait till you become emotional to worship. I worship when my emotions are lined up or they're not. I lift up my hands at times and it's a sacrifice. I lift up a shout when I just want to keep quiet because I'm worshiping my Lord and Savior and then I'll let my emotions catch up. Let's give God just one more praise, not from your emotions, come on, but from your gratitude of what He's done in your life. Come on, give Him one more praise. Give Him some energy, come on. Give Him some, come on. Hallelujah. We glorify God. You know, we've been hearing a lot of like amazing testimonies within the last two weeks. Last week we had someone that was watching online and they had, I mean, all kinds of diseases and they got healed online. And they got literally healed online. They came to the next service. Wednesday night they got healed on watching online. Sunday morning they came in and they got healed from some other things and there was a person that had a kidney disease for really like 15 years and this last week when they came to the Sunday morning service they got prayed for the power of God hit them they went back to the doctors the kidney disease is gone brand new kidneys we're hearing um last Sunday I remember um there was we talked about we're talking about, we're, I want you to get this. We believe in the word of God, but we also believe in the power of God. We are not a dead church. We're believing that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We're believing that today is going to be another day of miracles. Come on. Today's people are going to get set free. They're going to be healed. And they're going to have an encounter with a real Jesus that really does miracles even today. Through regular people like me and you that praise him. I had a, I had a lady that came with with her son and daughter and their, their young adults. And she came forward with, she named like four or five sicknesses she had. Yeah. I prayed with her and she got, she got knocked down. And I, I, and I explained to you what that is. It's a clash of kingdoms, the kingdom of God wow. and the kingdom of darkness. Wow. God doesn't fall, the enemy has to fall. That's what, that's what that is. After the, I prayed with her, she fell, right? And, and she stayed probably down for uh, 15, 20 minutes. I prayed for some other people as we went. I came back to her around 15, 20 minutes. She stood up, still crying. And she said this, I didn't know it was real like that. It was the first time in her life that she experienced a touch of God like that in her life. Her kids were like, what? We serve a real God that's here, come on, to touch your life today. We are not here to do a religious duty. We are here to have an encounter. Come on, encounter with the creator of the universe. Jesus! There's power in that name. 
And we're going to continue the story today. It's the second part of this teaching on, on just being desperate for a touch of Jesus. And we're going we're gonna to dive into a story a little bit deeper about two blind men that received sight after one encounter with Jesus, just one touch. That an impossible situation that was fixed instantly. You could come into this room with a lifelong condition and one encounter with Jesus turns it all around. Jesus is greater than your psych psychiatrist diagnosis, your doctor diagnosis, and whatever demon or whatever DNA you come from, there's a God that's bigger than your past, bigger than your failures, bigger than your mistakes, bigger than your heartbreak. He's a real God. One touch of Jesus can change your life forever. The scripture at the end of this story we read, they were, after Jesus touched them, they instantly saw. So why would Jesus give us a story like that? He don't even tell us their names, like blind man, blind man Sam and blind man Joe. No names. Because it doesn't matter who they are. Because Jesus is the focus of this story. We're all blind. We all have a condition. We all have a, an impossible situation we're dealing with. And the answer is still Jesus. So the name doesn't matter. Just fill yourself in. I'm the blind man and Jesus is Jesus. So what's your impossible situation today that you're believing for? And, and you know what the Bible says? My house should be called a house of prayer. You know what that means? It's a place that we connect with God. You know, you sh we should come in this place with some vision. We shouldn't come in this place with obligation. We should come in here with a vision from God. Like I am here today to get a, come on, I'm here today to get a breakthrough. And some of you have been fighting for this breakthrough for years. Could it be that today is your day of breakthrough? Don't let an ordinary, what looks like an ordinary moment pass you by. Because Jesus is here. And he's ready to do some extraordinary things. Amen. Come on. Amen. Let's give God Jesus one more praise. Come on. If you are well, come on. Welcome Jesus into this room. Come on. Welcome Jesus into this room. Welcome the Holy Spirit into this room. Let him know you're ready. Let him know you're ready to receive. This is your day. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. We give you all the honor and the glory today. Jesus, you're the star of this story. Yeah. You're the superstar. Back in the 70s, they had Jesus Christ superstar. They had that right. And I thank you, Lord, that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And then you've given us your Holy Spirit, the same spirit that resurrected Jesus from the dead, lives in us. Forgive us, Lord, for ignoring your spirit in us. Forgive us for magnifying our problems, our enemy, our situations, our resistance, magnifying that and minimizing you. Today, we're not here to, mag we're not here to magnify our problems. We're here to magnify our solution. And I thank you, you're greater than our past. You're greater than whatever demons we're fighting against. You're greater than, than depression. You're greater than anxiety. You're greater than fear. You're greater than heartbreak. You're greater than cancer. You're, you're greater than sin. Thank you, Jesus. You're the answer to it all. Jesus, have your way in this service. Holy Spirit, reveal yourself and manifest yourself today. In the mighty name of Jesus, online and in this place. We're here to hear your word, learn from your word, apply your word. You do the miracles. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Could it be today you become part of a story that we're reading today? In Matthew 20, verse 29, we're going to be discussing this. How did these desperate blind men receive their sight? Was there, was there things that they did that actually put themselves in a position to receive something from the Lord? 
I, understand this. You could want all day long, but let's say you don't pray. You don't receive anything. Let's say you, you need a breakthrough and you don't show up and even put yourself in the position. Do your best. You see, you do your best. God does the rest. You, you have to be careful that you want a miracle, but you're lazy. If you want a miracle, you got to do your part. Show up like you're showing up today. Tune in like you're tuning in today. Do your best and let God do the rest. So these two blind men, they do their best and Jesus does the rest. But I do want to know what they did because what they did was some spiritual warfare. That means it was something that was making them blind. And there was something, if they didn't resist it, that was going to keep them blind. What I mean by that is whatever difficult circumstance you're in is not only there, it wants to stay there. And if you don't know how to fight against that thing and resist it, it stays there. There were other blind men in that city, but these two blind men stood out and they got their sight. The other blind men stayed blind. There were other addicts but they stay addicted. There were the others depressed, but they stayed depressed. There were others that were in poverty and they stayed in their poverty. There were others that had a bad report and they stayed with their bad report. Nothing changed with the same opportunity. So I got to think about this. What did they do to put themselves in a position to receive sight? We know Jesus is a hero of the story, but they at least got themselves in position to get a miracle. So let's look at it. And it says, as Jesus and his disciples left town, the town of Jericho, a large crowd followed behind. Two blind men were sitting beside the road, most likely begging. When they heard that Jesus was coming that way, they heard Jesus was coming their way. They heard that Jesus the creator of the universe was coming their way. They heard the healer was coming their way. They heard the, they, they heard the one that raises the dead was coming their way. They heard that the Messiah, the savior of the world was coming their way. They began shouting, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. Be quiet, the crowd yelled at them. But they only shouted louder, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. All I'm saying is, do you want something bad enough that when you run into a little resistance, it doesn't deter you? We're going to dive deeper into this, but I've learned this. Whatever's resisting you, if you don't overcome it, it becomes your excuse. And either you're going to come out with an excuse or you're going to come out with a testimony. They could have easily said, the reason we're still blind is because of the crowd. It was because of the people. It was because of the obstacles. It was because of the resistance. There will always be resistance. We're going to have to learn how to fight and break through the resistance. We're going to talk about that in a minute today. When Jesus heard them, when Jesus what? He stopped and called. Now, I want you to get this. There were other conversations because there was a huge crowd. If there's a huge crowd, there's people talking. Some people are probably talking about what they're going to eat for lunch. There could be people in this room right now, you're thinking about Denny's and you're thinking about Sizzler and you're thinking about McDonald's, but you're not thinking about this moment and you have a desperate need that you're blind to. These guys were blind, but they had some vision. So you could be physically, you could have physical sight and be spiritually blind. They were in the opposite position. They were physically blind, but they had spiritual sight. That means they had vision of a better future. They were defining this moment. This moment is not going to pass us by. And Jesus heard them. Were there other conversations in the crowd, yes, there were other conversations in the crowd, but none of those conversations was getting Jesus' attention. But there was two blind men that had a conversation with themselves, 
and then they had an encounter with Jesus because their conversations were attached to a desperate need. They got Jesus' attention. But let's keep going. He stopped and called them. What do you want me to do for you? Lord, they said, we want to see. Lord, they said, we want to what? Jesus felt sorry for them and touched their eyes. I mean, Jesus loved them. Jesus had compassion on them. And what did he do? Touched their eyes. Instantly they could see, then they followed him. And I'm wondering, why didn't Jesus touch their feet? Because they could already walk. They didn't have vision for their feet. They had vision for their eyes. That means, I want you to get this. Jesus will touch any area that you have vision in. He touched your eyes because they said, we want to see. And I'm asking you, you're in this room. What do you want from God? Because if you could, come on, if you could define that, God will touch it. I haven't had a touch from God for years. Maybe you haven't had vision for years. Maybe you haven't prayed for years. And I'm talking about desperately pray for a desperate need. Maybe you become apathetic about the position and the situation you're in and you're just thinking, it's always been like this. I've always been blind and I guess I'm going to die blind. Don't let your condition blind you of a better future. I don't care if my mama's been like this, my grandma's been like this, the situation the doctor says is always going to be like this. I'm believing that right now. Jesus is bigger than, come on, my situation, my circumstance, my reports. I'm believing for a better life. I'm believing for a breakthrough. Not later, now. Someone say, now. Let's say again. Oh, I love that. Wow. I went to a church and just started saying now, now. It was crazy. I felt like it was almost a cult. I don't know what happened there. No. And I'll tell you why. The devil always wants you to think, well, uno de estos días, one of these days. And God said, how about, how about right now? How about turn around right now? I just see some faith right now. I'm, come on, I'm Jesus all by myself right now. Does anybody have faith that matches up with your Jesus right now? Change begins now. One more time. I'm telling you, you're scaring off a demon that's been saying later, later, later. And you, Later. Now. Later. Now. Not today. Now. That's how you fight the enemy. Not tomorrow. Not one of these days. Right now, my change begins. Right today's my day. So what did they do? I'm going to give you three things that they did to get their sight. One is they came into agreement. They used the spiritual power of agreement to access the supernatural. And what did they come in agreement with? They came in agreement with the word of God. They came in agreement with what, what God's word said, who Jesus was and what he would do. They recognized who Jesus was. They called him the son of David. Now, that means that they had to have some previous Bible study. Someone would say Bible knowledge. So they began, they were blind, but they heard about Jesus. And when they called Jesus the son of David, that was a title that was reserved for the Messiah or the Savior of the world that the Jews were expecting to come and deliver them. Son of David represented, he was the king that was going to come. And they thought he was going to overthrow the Roman Empire and reestablish the Israelites or Israel as the dominant government on earth. But there were some signs. See, but Jesus was here to overthrow, yes, a kingdom, but it was a kingdom of Satan. He was here to overthrow a demonic rule. That's what he came to do. But that, that title, the son of David, was reserved just for 
the Savior. Or, they used to call, or in other words, the Messiah. So they began calling him the son of David. And I'll tell you why they call him the son of David. Because, because the son of David had some promises that came along with it. The son of David, this was one of the promises that came with the title, the son of David. This was it. He would heal the blind. How do we know when the Messiah or the Savior comes, he's going to give sight to the blind He's going to heal deaf ears. So when they're saying son of David, they were saying the one that heals the blind. Right now we're getting the scripture to match up with our circumstance. And we know if you're the son of David, today's our day to see. Someone say no scripture. When you're in warfare, you got to understand this. You got to have a scripture that matches up with your, come on, with your prayer. I'm not standing on my emotions because my emotions go up and down. I'm not standing on my circumstance because my circumstance changes. I'm not standing on what they say because what they say, it fluctuates. But I'm standing on the word of God and his promises and his word never fails. So let, let's look at this. Look at the promise in Isaiah 35, 4. And this is what it says to you even today. Cheer up. Don't be afraid. Your God is coming to punish your enemies. Your God is coming to overthrow the devil. God will take revenge on them and rescue you. And look what it says about the son of David. The blind will see and the ears of the deaf will be healed. Those who were lame will, will, will leap around like deer. Tongues once silent will begin to shout. Water will rush through the desert. And what they were saying, this scripture is for us. The son of David is walking through our town and he promises that the blind will see and those who were silent will begin to shout. That's us. We had no voice in society. We were the disabled. We were the nobodies. We were the beggars. But now God is saying, the people that you counted out, I'm counting in right now. And God is saying, everybody might be counting you out, but it's time for you to raise up your shout and say, Jesus, you're here. Do something in my life. So they came in agreement with God's word. They came in agreement with what? And they came in agreement with each other in prayer. Now, it's important that if you're believing for something, get this. Get a believing partner. Get the power of agreement moving. You don't need everybody to agree with you. Just get one or two people, just one person to agree with you. Say, right now I'm believing for this miracle. And here's the scripture that I'm believing for in my life. I'm believing my kids are going to serve God, period, 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 period. What's the scripture you're standing on? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Will you agree with me on this scripture right now in prayer? I'm going to agree with you, sister, and we're believing that your kids only, but my kids are going to come back to the borders, and they're not just going to come to church. They're going to worship God. They're going to encounter with God. So they came and agreed with the word. They came and agreed with each other in prayer. Look at the promise, Matthew 18, 19. I also, Jesus said this, I also tell you this. If two of you agree here on earth concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. What? Right now, you could go home just on this. What? I could just, I just need to start, stop worrying? Stop being fearful. Stop complaining. And I just need to start agreeing with somebody concerning anything. Concerning what? Concerning qué? Anything. Wait again. Let me read it again. Come again. If, if, conditional statement. Two. Stop focusing on who's against you. Stop focusing on what's against you. 
But God says, you don't need all of them. Just two people. If you could just get two people on earth to get in an atmosphere like, like, like heaven. In heaven, there's nobody arguing or fighting. In heaven, when everybody's in agreement, what he's saying, create an atmosphere of heaven in your family, in your house, in your marriage. Find another person to agree with concerning Concerning, concerning, someone say if. My Father in heaven will do it for you. It doesn't say might do it for you, will do it for you. All I'm asking, what are you believing for and who are you agreeing with and what have you prayed for and what have you established? I'm believing for sight. The only difference between these two blind men and everyone else in the crowd was one thing. They got a vision, they got a scripture, and they came into agreement. And, and this is what I want to say. God, Jesus cannot resist our agreement. He's attracted to it. And I'll tell you one more thing. The devil can't resist our division. So when we're walking in division and we're fighting, we're arguing, instead of attracting the spirit of God, you're attracting demons. All right, let's keep on going. So they came into agreement. Someone say, come in, come in agreement. What they come in agreement with? With the word and with each other in prayer. So this is my action. This is what I want you to do. Get a vision of a desired future. Get a scripture that matches up with the vision. And get an agreement partner. If you don't do this, you won't get the results. These blind men got their sight and they got a miracle because they did these three things. They got a vision of the desired future we want to see. They got a scripture that they began to confess and proclaim. And then they got an agreement partner. Two people in the same condition believing for a better life. And it doesn't matter if no one else has ever gotten that miracle. Doesn't mean it can't happen for you. Number two, what they do, they shouted. They shouted with passion. You know what that means? They took action on what they heard and what they were believing for. Someone say, take action. Now, they couldn't do much, but they could shout. And why did they shout? Because they, know, they knew how to shout. What I mean by that is they were blind and they were beggars. The only way they were going to eat was just say something like this, alms for the poor, we're blind. Will you have mercy on us and give us some of your spare change so we could eat today? And if they didn't yell and they didn't let their need know, they were going to starve. Their opportunity for provision was going to pass them by. They were used to begging for food. But this time, they were going to yell for their sights. They were going to yell their praises to the God that created the heavens and the earth. You know what they did? They did what they could. And then Jesus was going to do what they couldn't. I love it. So what did they ch shout? They shouted their praise. They declared without any shame that they believed in Jesus. They believed that he was the Lord, the Lord, their Lord, the son of David, the savior of the world. I'm going to give you a key. Whatever we can praise God to be, he will be in our lives. One of the, the tactics of the devil is not to make you aware how big your God is. And you can't, I would, you'll never know how big your God is focus on how big your problem is. You'll never defeat a giant when you just focus. He's nine feet tall. He's undefeated. No one's ever beat him. And no one, and no one wants to face him. The bigger you make your giant, the bigger your problem becomes. But David did not defeat Goliath by focusing on how big Goliath was, he defeated Goliath 
by identifying and praising how big his God was. Someone say praise. praise. Say it with me, praise. praise. Praise is magnifying God. Complaining is magnifying your problem. This world is going to hell in a handbasket. Shut up. I mean, I don't, it's just so what? What, what good is that going to do us today? Oh my gosh, this world's getting worse. So what? What, I mean, what, are, what are you, the bearer of bad news? Where's the hope in that? You know why some of us have no faith? The, the enemy has you on autopilot just talking about how bad things are. Instead of glorifying God and how big he is, and God is saying, come on, in the last days, don't you read my scripture? Of course there's going to be a great falling away, but I'm also going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and you're going to see my glory. You're going to see my healing. You're going to see my power. Does anybody believe that Jesus, come on, this is not going to end, come on, with a dead church. This is going to end with an on fire church that's miracle, come on, working miracles and power. That's a vision. Someone say, get vision. But my husband, he's just the devil. Okay. Gas prices are $5. Okay. By saying that, did it change anything? The doctor said, I know, but is that it? Does it end there? I went for a job interview and they didn't hire me. Okay, so what? Is that the last job interview in the whole world? Well, I went to 10 of them. So what? Number 11's coming. So what? I mean, why talk about your problems? It doesn't make it. Talking about your problems does not create a solution. Talking about your Jesus creates a solution. We got to know the name of Jesus. His name is above every single name. Praise God. Shout praises to God. Magnify God bigger than your problems. Now, we need to give him permission to be and release his power into our lives. We need to start saying something like this. You are Jehovah Jireh, my provider. You are Jehovah Rapha, my healer. You are El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one. You are God Almighty. You are Jehovah Rohi, my shepherd. Jehovah Shalom, my peace. You are Emmanuel, God with us. You're my hope. You're my savior. You're the king of kings and lord of lords. You're my deliverer. You're the alpha. You're the omega. You're the way, the truth, and the life. You, you are my protector. You are my restorer. You are my redeemer. You are my comforter. You are my joy. Come on, you are my strength. You are my everything. With you, I can do all things. Can anybody shout some praises to God? And some of them, some of them might be saying, well, Pastor, you went, you went too fast on those names. Like, what was that? Were you speaking in tongues? No, what I'm saying is you might, if you want to dig deeper, you might go ahead and get a download of this sermon and put it on pause and start writing down those names and knowing who your God is. Because you know, come on, you know all about COVID. You know all about cancer. You know all about your husband. You know all about your wife. You know all about this world. You know all about the Antichrist. But do you know about your Christ? Do you know about your Savior? Do you know about your King? He's greater, come on, he's greater than your bondage. He's the King of kings, Lord of lords. And who the sun sets free is free indeed. Freedom is in the house. We are not going to be a dead, quiet church. Because if the devil could shut your mouth, he shuts down your breakthrough. I'm just depressed. You better start proclaiming God is the, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I will not give it. I, I'm not depressed. I'm, I'm a child of God. I, come on. I am free from this depression. That is not my inheritance. The joy of the Lord is my son. Rejoice in the Lord always. Be thankful always. I'm going to just right now proclaim my spiritual heritage. See, if you don't resist it, it will just take over. Hmm. 
They shouted their praise. And there's a, there's a scripture in Psalms 29 two says this. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty and the majesty of his holiness as a creator and source of holiness. The word ascribe means give credit to think of as belonging to as a quality or characteristic. What, what, this is what he's saying. Will you, this is what God said, will you acknowledge who I am so I could be that in your life? I just can't wait till Jesus comes back. This life is so hard. I, I'm not thinking that. Uh, Jesus, come back when you need to come back. But right now we got some stuff to do. We got to overthrow some demonic kingdoms. We got to, come on, we got to save some souls. Come on, we got to, come on, we got to glorify your name. Come on, we want this world to know that Jesus, you're alive. And there's a church that praises you, that knows who you are and is walking in your glory. Amen. People don't want religious dead church. We had, a, we had a lady on our Spanish service that came. And she came because her daughter brought her. And her daughter speaks English. Mom doesn't speak English. And we began to talk to her. And she came in and she goes, I don't want prayer. I'm a Catholic. And we love Catholics. You're cool. And we love you. You can relax here. We ain't fighting against you. She goes, okay. But in one of our sisters, before she leaves, just hugs her and just gives her a little L-O-V-E, you know me. We're down with O-P-P. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, give her a little love, right? She loves her. And as soon as she starts hugging her, the presence of God starts hitting her. And she starts crying and she falls to the ground again. Power of God hits her. Power of God hits her, and she, on her arm, her, on her hand, she has all kinds of idols and religious things as a, as a bracelet. And in the middle of the prayer, she takes it, and she rips it off her hand. She gets saved that moment. The Holy Spirit delivered her. And I'm telling you, we serve a God that's real, that can talk about, he can save whoever he wants to save. But he needs some people that can believe that he can do the impossible. Nothing's impossible with our God. We need to get rid of all these doubtful thoughts. And it's time to start praising God for who he is. He is holy. He is powerful. Let's ascribe. Ascribe. What did it say? Ascribe what? To the Lord, the glory due to his name. Woo, praise the Lord. So the third thing they did. So they shouted. Some of they shouted. What did they shout? They shouted their praise. And the other thing they shouted, they shouted their prayer. They shouted their praise and they shouted what? Their prayer. And what was their prayer? They said, Lord, son of David. This was their prayer. Have mercy on us. This was their prayer. Have mercy on us. You know, we say, what does that mean? Help me. Help us. We got a family problem. Help us. We got a marriage problem. Help us. We got some demonic kids. Help. We got a bad report. Help. There's a generational curse in our family. Help. Come on, we need fire of your Holy Spirit. Help. Is there anybody here that can shout a prayer and just say, help, Lord? And I said, they shouted their prayer. And you know what that means? Someone say passion. There's a time in your life, you got to know what you're believing for. I remember um, there's a guy, young man, I mean, a man named Luke. And we found Luke on the streets of San Bernardino. Luke came last Sunday to our service. The, the mic is, 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 the devil's mad right now. That's good. <laughs> no, but Luke came last week to our service. And I remember Luke, he was chronically homeless, him and his wife. Strung out on drugs for years, let's say 10, 15 years on the streets. Their kids were taken away from them, um, just gone. He started coming to our downtown campus 
just to get a meal on Sunday mornings because we would cook breakfast every Sunday morning and he'd come. And he was shooting up all kinds of stuff on his arm and this would happen. That week as he kept coming, this is what happened. His arm broke and he couldn't shoot up with no more without any help. And no one was helping him. So he came up with his broken arm. He goes, I got a broken arm. I go, pray that my arm gets healed. I go, no. You're better off with a broken arm because you can't shoot up. He goes, that's right. I go, let's change your prayer. Let's, say, let's start praying right now for your addiction, for you to be set free from your addiction. And we prayed and we agreed. This is what happened to Luke. Luke now, he just, he, just, he just texted me last week. He goes, I'm 16 years sober. Do you remember that day when you prayed for me with a broken arm? And if it wasn't for my broken arm, I'd still be shooting up, but I'm free. And I remember Luke. He would shout his prayer. And after every service, he was asking for something impossible. He wanted his kids restored to him. And they were already adopted into the foster system. They were gone. He goes, I want my family back. I want my kids back. And every Sunday, he would shout his prayer with his broken arm, coming to church, and homeless still, but now serving. And not only coming for a meal, but now he's part of the church. And he's doing his part to clean up after the meals. He's serving. He's serving God with a prayer. And if he asked Luke, what's the prayer? He would say, I want my children back. I want my children back. I want my children back. He kept praying for that. He didn't stop praying for that. It was a year later. He brought his kids to church. He goes, these are the children I'm believing for. I want these kids back. They let them come to church with me. He goes, I want them back. I want my children back. But I need to get a place. And then Luke got a place. It was a year later that he came with his kids. But this time he was not praying to get his children back. He was testifying. I got my children back. He knew what he was praying for. And he wasn't going to let anything stop that prayer. He was shouting. It. He was consistent. He was persistent. And he got it. And we'll end it with this. What did these blind men do? They overcame all obstacles and temptations. I've learned this in front of every breakthrough, vision, idea, there are obstacles and temptations. Any temptation that we don't overcome becomes our excuse. And at the end of the trial, we'll either have a testimony or an excuse. We'll either be victorious or a victim. We choose our reality by our response. An obstacle is something that obstructs or hinders progress. A temptation is, is a seduction or, or a pull or bait or a snare or a trap or a decoy. And what was their obstacle? First of all, they were blind. They could have met their condition and say, we cannot get Jesus' attention. We can't see him. We can't touch him because we don't know where he's at. He's blind. But they didn't let that stop them. But their biggest obstacle was people. Because when they began to shout their prayer and their praise, the people said, be quiet. And they yelled at them, trying to intimidate them, trying to put them back in their spot. You're a nobody. You have no right to yell in this place. You're, out, you're a person that's an outside of our society. You're not included in this. Shut up. But the Bible says that they, they yelled even louder. And it says, when you get resistance you got to raise your level of participation. It's not time to back up. It's time to push harder than you've ever pushed. Now, I could tell you maybe what I would have did when they told me to shut up. I might have told them like this, why don't you shut up? And argue with them. Who are you to tell me, I'm blind, man, but who are you to tell me what I can say, what I can, where are you? Right, right, I'm talking to you. <laughs> and they're going to start arguing and watch Jesus patch, I mean, let the opportunity pass by. I'm going to say this. Some of us right now, instead of focusing on your miracle, you're focusing on a distraction. 
you're upset with somebody, you're arguing with somebody, you're hating on somebody, you're talking about somebody, and you cannot be talking about somebody and praying at the same time. You make up your mind what you're believing for. You know what they did? They didn't even address that crowd. Like, shut up, Jesus! One of your greatest temptations is to fall for the bait of offense. Some of us in this room, you cannot get a miracle because instead of praying, you're talking about somebody to hurt you. And I'm going to give you an action plan. If you want to get your miracle, you're going to have to give up your grudge. You're going to have to give up your bitterness. You're going to have to give up your doubt. And you're going to have to, come on, grab onto a prayer. Because as long as you're talking about people, you can't be talking to God. And unless you forgive them, you can't be forgiven. Don't let that person become your bait and your excuse. I would have, I would have stayed at the Way Royal Outreach, but somebody was rude to me. So someone deterred you from your pursuit? So you remain blind? Because every single time you're going to be close to a miracle, there's going to be some decoys. There's going to be some temptation. There's going to be some obstacles. And don't you fall for the obstacle. Don't you fall for the bait. Don't you get distracted. You stay on course with your vision. You stay on course with your praise. You stay on course with your prayer. And I guarantee you, if you stay on course, God will hear you. God will touch you. And instead of coming out with a, come on, coming out with just a test, you're going to come out with a testimony and say, I almost gave in, but I kept my praise. I kept my worship and I kept my focus. Is there anybody here? Come on, that's ready to receive your miracle from God. Let's all stand up. We serve a good God. Amen. Okay. I'm believing right now the power of God is here. I don't know what your miracle that you're believing for is, but I pray you're believing for something. Some of you in this room are desperate. You're like these blind men and you're saying, I've been blind my whole life. I've been in this condition for a long period of time. But today, I declare it is my day of salvation. Something has to change. Today's my day. You could remain blind and become just part of the crowd that comes in and comes out. Or you could be one that says, no, I'm not going to let this opportunity pass by. And I could care less what people think. Be careful that you're not more concerned what people think about you than getting your breakthrough. You could leave here with nothing or you could leave here with a breakthrough. People are getting set free from depression. They're getting healed. They're getting saved. Their lives are turning around right now. We are praying for this moment. We are fasting for this moment. Jesus is here. Spirit is here. The power to create the heavens and earth is right here. If you're depressed... You've lost your vision of a future means that you're hopeless. You know what hopeless means? You're blind. I cannot see a better future. I can't see it. You're blinded about you, by your condition. Think it's always gonna, I can't see an opportunity. I can't see a breakthrough. I can't see healing. I can't see a better life. You need sight. Today's your day to get some. And, and what's happened, confusion has set in. You're not even sure about your future. It's just confusion. Like, I can't see nothing. All I can see is my problems. I can see my circumstances. I'm very short-sighted right now. I can't see good. You need sight today. The Bible says without vision, people perish. They die off. They quit. Do you know why people backslide? No vision. But you have to know what, what you're fighting for is worth it. But there's a time you got to walk out of the crowd and say, I'm standing out. I'm not here to fit in with this crowd. They can tell me to shut up, but I'm here for a breakthrough and today's my day. Today's my day. Someone say, today's my day. But if you're in a desperate situation and you need a breakthrough right now, I'm going to ask you to do like the blind men. Stand up, step out of your comfort zone, and walk up here right now. If you need a desperate breakthrough right now, I want you to stand up. Come up right here, right? We're going to pray with you. Come on. We're going to pray. It doesn't matter what anybody else is thinking, what they're going through. This is my day. I'm going through a desperate situation. I need a breakthrough right now. Come on. Let's give up. Come on. Let's, come on. Someone's coming here with a 
drastic situation. Come on, let's keep on praising God. Let's keep on praising God. Let's, God's ready to do something. Come on, someone's coming with their impossible situation. They're going to get a touch of Jesus today. Okay. Mama, what are Rachel, this power. Someone say power. power. Rachel's coming up here. I ask her, what do you want, Rachel? Check this out. Rachel says, I'm full of anxiety. I'm full of depression. Something has to change. I've never accepted God in my life. I want to accept Jesus Christ right now as my Savior. I, I need a new life. She's crying right now. Come on, that's the power of God bringing someone to salvation right now. She'll never be the same again. God's already touching her. Okay, our sister is believed for healing for cancer. I, I'm gonna tell you, Jesus is bigger than cancer. Come on, come on, somebody. You gotta know that Jesus still heals cancer. All right, we're gonna believe for you, with you. He wants restoration in his life and his family. God loves you, man. God wants your family together. He wants your life together. It's time to surrender all. Today's your day. What do you want from God today, Mama? She wants her daughter and her to surrender everything to God today. Come on. These are real prayers. They're real prayers. I'm, I'm going to tell you this. We're going to come out of this with some testimonies of what God did. I, we've prayed. Rob, we've prayed in a Sunday morning service that God will touch someone by the Sunday night service. And see them come after 10 years, all of a sudden show up to the next service. We're going to pray that God touches your daughter wherever she's at. Praise God. If you want to give your life to Jesus, uh, there's something tugging at your heart right now. I'm going to say this. What you're missing is not, an, uh, check this out, this is for real. You're not missing more drugs. You're not missing another drink. You're not missing a person in your life. If she just came back, he just came back, I'm going to tell you, they come back and you're still empty. What you're missing is Jesus today. And I want you to get this. Life is very short. Someone said life's short. You're here, you're gone. You're here, you're gone. That's the reality. And the Bible says, what does the profit of man to gain the whole world lose his soul? You know what he's saying is you can get so busy trying to get ahead in life that you forget about your eternal soul. There's going to be a day that you die and you're going to stand before God. The Bible says that every man is appointed a day to die. You have an appointment with death. And after that, judgment. There's not a person here that will not die and there's not a person here that will not stand before God in judgment. And if you stand before God without faith in Jesus, there's only one thing waiting for you. It's judgment. Condemnation separation from God forever and ever but God loves you so much this is what he did we sinned and we're living in a world that demands justice more than ever someone does wrong justice 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 we serve a just God and you know what that means we've all sinned and there's not a person that's going to get away with it but God loved me and you so much that he sent his only sinless son the son of David, the king of kings, came on earth as a man to take our place. And the punishment that should have came to us, Jesus suffered. He died so we could be forgiven. Justice. The price must be paid. God loved you so much that he sent his only son to pay the price for all the wrong you've done. And all you got to do is believe it, accept it, and be forgiven and have a new life. You can have eternal life today. Open your heart to Jesus. He'll come in, change your life. If you're saying, Pastor, right now, I don't know if I were to die. I'd go to heaven. I don't know if I'm right with God. But I want to get right with God. 
When I count to three, raise your hands. I want to get right with God. I want to give my life to Jesus. One, two, three, raise your hands. Raise your hand when I say three. All these hands up here. All these hands up here. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? I see the hand over there. I see the hand there. I see the hand. Proud of you. Proud of you. Takes a real man to do that. Come up here. Those that raise their hand. Come up here real quick. Come up here real quick. I want to pray with you. Come on. Let's give them a hand as they're leaving their whole lives in those seats. Okay. Hallelujah. All right, let's go. Ask your neighbor, you want to go up there, I'll go up there with you. They're still coming. We're just going to give some time for the Holy Spirit to work. Come on, you go up there, I'll go up there with you. Hallelujah. Ready? Jesus. He's the name above every name. What's your name? Isaiah, God's going to reach your family through you. And I'll just say, say, follow me. Give your whole life to me. Repent of your sins. You're going to be the bridge. I'm going to reach them. Nothing's impossible. God's saying, nothing's impossible with me. Nothing's impossible with me. With me, nothing's impossible. Okay? Are you ready to receive your miracle today? New life. Okay? We'll receive it right now. Ready? What do you believe it for? Okay. He's believing right now. We're going to pray right now for that spirit of alcoholism and I'll say and backsliding for you to be set free from it. In the name of Jesus. It says, says, I renounce the spirit of alcoholism, addiction, and backsliding. I'm done. I repent. Set me free, Jesus. All right, put your hands up. Get ready. Here goes. I'm going to count to three. I'm going to set you free right now. One, two, three. Spirit of alcohol, backsliding, every demonic hole of chains, I command you right now to leave. One, two, three. Go! Go! There it goes. There it goes. It's breaking right now. Go! Go! Now! There it goes. There it goes. I said, power of God, it's setting him free right now. Come on. He's never going to touch alcohol again because Jesus set him free from a spirit that had him going back. I'll tell you this. I said, Pastor, why did he fall? A clash of kingdoms. The kingdom of God clashes with the kingdom of Satan. Satan has to fall and leave. Come on. I didn't touch him. You know who touched him? Jesus touched him. Come on. We serve a God that's real. Come on. We're not no dead church. We serve a God that's real. All right. Church, understand we are not letting, we are not an in and out burger church. We got to give room. We, go, we are a church that speaks the word and believes in his power. Word, someone say word and power. So we have to give room for the Holy Spirit to work. Amen. Come on. Well, I just like to leave and come. Come on. We're not leaving and coming. Someone, someone's blind. Someone's dealing. With, come on. Someone's going to kill themselves tonight if they don't get set free. In the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you for your Holy Spirit being here. You're the miracle worker. There's those that need to be healed right now. And we're, we thank you, Lord, that you're Jehovah Rapha, our healer. There are those that right now need a financial breakthrough. You're Jehovah Jireh, our provider. There are those that need salvation right now. You are their Savior. You are their Lord. There are those, Father, right now that are depressed and they need freedom from anxiety and depression. Father, today they're going to receive it. Repeat after me, everyone that's here in the front. Say, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I surrender my whole life to you. I repent of my sins. Set me free. Make me new. Fill me now with, my, with your Holy Spirit. I'm believing for healing right now. 
I'm believing for freedom right now. Touch me, Lord. There it goes. There it goes. I'm gonna speak. I'm gonna speak right now against the spirit of infirmity and sickness. Spirit of infirmity and sickness, all sicknesses together. I speak to you now. In the name of Jesus, you're leaving. When I say go, all spirits of infirmity and sickness, go online. Go. Freedom healing be healed in Jesus name in the name of Jesus miracles right now are happening all over the auditorium online right now in the name of Jesus there it goes there it goes salvation salvation come here honey come here honey bring her up here bring her up here what do you believe for mama okay that's fine in the name of Jesus we're agreed two agree 